Another one would be, uh, along different lines, is R.C. Spruill's uh, Faith Alone is the name of the book. I don't know if that's translated into Portuguese or not, but, but this was a book that really helped me understand the importance of the doctrine of justification by faith alone as articulated by the Reformers and um, how that's being undermined today and the importance of holding to that. And I read that very early on, uh, probably between my college days and my seminary days. And that that uh, that helped me see um, the centrality of that doctrine. Um, another one would be B.B. Warfield's *The Inspiration and Authority of Scripture*. B.B. Um, Warfield, I think, makes a very uh, makes an excellent case that the scriptures are inspired and inerrant. One of the things I really remember from that book, and that I will always remember from that book, *Inspiration and Authority of Scriptures* by Warfield is that this was Jesus' view of Scripture. He makes the case that Jesus looked at the Scriptures as wholly true and from God. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a really powerful argument. Um, the reason I believe the Scriptures are inspired and inerrant is because Jesus did. If I follow Jesus, I should obey and accept what Jesus taught. And so that was, that was a really important, really important book. Well, I'll read, um, I've been reading, I, we haven't actually finished them yet, but we've been reading out loud. I've been reading out loud to the family, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, different biographies are, are interesting to read. Um, uh, Roland Bainton's Here I Stand is an excellent biography of Martin Luther. Uh, George Marsden's Jonathan Edwards, uh, biography on Jonathan Edwards, both the short and the longer ones, there are two versions that he wrote. Those are really, that's a really helpful biography, but very detailed, especially the longer one. Well, I don't think that we need to read only Christian books, and there are things that we can learn from secular books all the time. As long, I, of course, they can do a lot of damage, too. And um, I think we have to have our guard up if, we're, we have, if we are reading secular books. And we don't want to be, I, I would say we don't want to so emphasize secular books that we're wasting our time and our time is valuable, even as Christians, and we should use it well. Um, there's an old, Amer not, not American, um, I think Scottish, uh, Horatius Bonar. He wrote a little book called um, Follow the Lamb, and it's just a series of uh, little, um, little chapters that give advice to the Christian on the Christian life. He has a whole section in there on the reading of books, and uh, he'd be kind of discouraging of reading secular books. Um, I probably wouldn't go as I wouldn't go as far as he does, but I do think his point ought to be well taken that you know we can get so caught up with reading secular books that we're we're wasting time and we're we're actually hurting ourselves and being um, influenced with worldly ideas. But I mean, there have been plenty of secular books that have influenced me in helpful ways. For example. Um, Ideas Have Consequences by Richard Weaver. Um, the, uh, uh, the book Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman, where he, where he criticizes popular culture in the United States of America especially. Um, books like that have been, um, have been very helpful to me personally. They're secular books, but they but it's but he's bringing insight that sometimes Christians overlook because they just don't they don't think as deeply as they ought to, and to think deeply you need to uh, you need to read pretty widely. Um, you need to interact with ideas that are a little bit outside your orbit, and and there are ways there's often things that you can pull away from these books that uh, that are that are really quite helpful. But secular books, uh, especially ones that are that are sound and secular books that critique a culture, uh, will can help you see things that 
that you've never thought about. And that's really, that's really the beauty of a book. You're entering into another person's view of the world. And you have to be careful if that's an unbeliever. But, but, you're, but he's going to think about things that you've never thought about before. And he's going to sharpen you. And help you come into that vision of the world in a way that can help you see in your own faithfulness as a Christian to God how you can be more obedient to Him, which is really the objective that we, that we have. We want to live for God's glory. We want to obey Him. And so, um, and so we, um, we often have blind spots to that. So, you know, even a book on manners, for example, um, can be really helpful. In, for us to see ways we can handle ourselves more properly among other people and make them feel more at ease and more considerate of them in ways when we're just being selfish with our bad manners before. A book on manners can be helpful in that way. So yes, uh, as I would say be guarded with secular books, but at the same time, um, but at the same time be careful. The other way that secular books are helpful for us is it pushes us and it sharpens us to be more, uh, to be more, um, to give a give a sounder defense of the faith. It can, as we're interacting with uh, with secular ideas, especially those that are actually opposed to what we hold and believe, it, this can upset the faith of some, and I would want to be really careful about it. But if 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 we're truly committed to Christ and the Scriptures, and that's very valuable, and He is most valuable to us, we, we shouldn't be intimidated by secular books. We should be able to interact with their ideas, to interact with them seriously, and respond to them.